<laughs> Good. Yeah, it would be fun if if you were here yesterday. Uh, yeah, it would be interesting to things to say about on the panel too. So. Oh yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, the dragon nun made him work for a. Yeah, yeah but, you know, he, he maybe wouldn't have come back. Right? <laughs> That's true. Well, you'll have to you'll have to pick on him today. <laughs> oh, I <don't> know. <laughs> I, I've done neutrino math already, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but you know, there's other things. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm, I'm Susie, maybe. maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to bring Is everybody here? Is it 2 o'clock? No? <laughs> it's very precise. Should we tell jokes for a minute? Or <laughs> Go ahead, tell jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to listen too. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, take it away. Okay, so yesterday we uh, we we sort of uh, started uh, by saying well, we ended by saying we're going to talk a little bit about the chiral perturbation theory today. Okay, so so again, this is a. According to Tom's word, a very poetic uh, description of it. It's not, uh, you know, uh, but it's it's sort of like trying to use this to set the language and uh, and uh, some some concept that we are going to be useful later. Um, so, what's the picture? Picture that we know that uh, something happened at a scale called the lambda QCD. L let me just call it a one GeV. Okay, this is a a huge can of worm, what is lambda QCD, but, uh, but let's just call it a GEV. Um, we know QC, uh, the, 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 the couplings become strong, things start to form bound state, and so on. Okay? Uh, naively, you will say that's it. Uh, there isn't, uh, it's, it's beyond our current uh, computational technology, at least the pencil paper computational te technology. There you can do this on lattice and so on. Okay? Um, but it it turns out uh, that uh, there is uh, there thing there are things you can do more, okay? Even even pencil paper. It's uh, the, the the first indication that uh, you may be able to do something more is the observation that uh, there is a, a light, light mesons, okay? So uh, such as pions, okay? So pion it's about uh, 100 MeV mass, okay? Um, so, and uh, you see, huh? Now this looks like a, a, a nice setup that I may be able to do something perturbative about this state. Okay, so so I have a I have a I have a cutoff, and uh, but I have something that at, at energy relevant to energy much lower than a cutoff. Okay, well not that much lower, but uh, at least one order magnitude. Okay, so. Which you will see, it's actually true. Okay, so the the you, you see that the, the the one of the small expansion parameter you wanted you you uh, the in at energy scale relative uh, similar to to pi on the, the the small expansion parameter you could find is this. Okay, which is uh, is true. Okay, you 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 will be able to. Uh, <coughs> You will, you will be able to do do computations w with that small expansion parameter. Okay. So, okay. So now let's just uh, go ahead and start. So the first puzzle I think you you wanted to ask yourself is that why is this much lighter than that? Okay. It sounds a uh, sounds a little bit strange, right? Because proton and the neutrons, other bound states are right uh, right around the QCD scale, and this is much lighter than that. So, um, right now, of course, I think most of you know know the answer. Most of you know the answer, and uh, but I think it's still in the in the in the, in the original idea. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's imp very impressive. Is that uh, since it's uh, much smaller than QCD scale, maybe its mass is uh, we should be approximately thinking about its mass is zero. Okay. So, but it w we we know the series that can give you zero mass scalars. Okay, what are these series? So what are, why is axial mass zero? Shift symmetry. Shift symmetry. So these are ghost stones. 
Okay, so the 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 <laughs> The, the, yeah, so the, then, then the conjecture is this is actually following from some spontaneous symmetry breaking, and uh, these are the ghost stones. Okay, breaking what kind of symmetry? You wanted to take uh, the inspiration from the UV theory of QCD, okay, because the, the, the global symmetry structure there, and uh, starting with the global symmetry structure there. So here there is a bit of choice, okay, so depends on what do you think. So obviously we're only going to talk about the light quarks. Because heavy quarks like a uh, uh, charm and uh, bottom, especially top quark, uh, the mass is way above QCD scale. So at the, at the level we are talking about, we, you should more or less integrate them out. Okay, at least uh, well, uh, let's integrate all three of, of them out. Okay, so they are they are they are they don't they don't they are not there. So the so the quarks that is in the in your theory is up and down and strange. Okay, and even even this, you may have uh, second thoughts about that. Okay, because this is a uh, actually 100 MeV ish mass. So, but let, let's just do it uh, nevertheless. Okay, and you, you you can you can you can if you don't want to think about that, we we can we can we can just deal with these two flavor too. So, you know, the, the the story is completely the same. Okay, so now the the QCD Lagrangian for these. Uh, is just uh, it's just this, right? It's vector-like and uh, so on. Okay. Um, <coughs> therefore, the global symmetry of this Lagrangian. What is the global symmetry of this Lagrangian? Yeah, SU three left cross SU three left, the right. SU three left cross. SU three right. Notice that this is the different from this is different from the SU three we wrote yesterday. Okay, so the, 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 these are yeah. Well we, yesterday the SU three is a UCT right. The, the, this is different. This is, a, this is a, just these three things. Okay. Um. So yeah, under which Q goes to uh, U L Q under the left rotation and the Q goes to U R Q under the right rotation. Okay, and uh, then you guess that uh, uh, this is a Q Q bar is a is a good Lorentz invariant operator, and uh, looks like uh, this is something that should get a VEV. Okay. And uh, I think this is called a vector-like confinement. Mm -hmm. So uh, then, with this getting VEV, this breaks this symmetry. Okay, because left and right cannot rotate uh, independently. This breaks this symmetry to its diagonal subgroup. Okay, maybe we could call we can call this vector if you want. Okay, is this okay? So that's the symmetry breaking pattern. Now, this is spontaneous symmetry breaking. Therefore, there will be ghost stones. How many ghost stones are there? Eight, because there are eight broken generators. Um, so eight Nambu ghost stone bosons. Okay, and uh, let's just call them pi i's. Okay. So in reality, they have slightly different names. Okay. Um, okay. Now, so how do we describe ghost stone bosons? Hmm? Huh? Nonlinear sigma model. <laughs> so, okay, but we don't need to go that. So it's a nonlinear sigma model with a CCWD formalism and so on. Okay. So, but we don't we don't actually need to go to that that deep. Okay, but uh, it's basically just exponentiate the 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 <coughs> ghost stone fields. I, I divided by divided by a scale which I call the F path. Okay. So the, the convenience of, of, of doing this, 
the, the convenience of, of doing it like this is that the, the, the global symmetries, the global symmetries still acting on these fields linearly, acting on sigma linearly, even though, so the global symmetry, global symmetries um, acting on pi's, they, they, they look like shift symmetries. One of you already said, okay. That's why basically this has no has no mass terms, okay. and uh, but uh, and this is not very convenient, okay. But acting on this <coughs> is still linearly. So sigma goes to U L dagger, okay. And uh, the the the. This so-called chiral symmetry breaking is the, the spontaneous symmetry breaking in terms of sigma field is nothing but just this get this guy has a VAV, okay, which is one. Is this okay? So this guy has a VAV one that breaks this two rotation into their diagonal. Okay. Only the diagonal rotation keeps this uh, this web invariant. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now we can write the the Lagrangians uh, in in terms of sigma. So you, we start with the lowest dimension Lagrangian, right? So and also the kinetic term with two derivatives and lowest dimension. Okay, so um, F pi square trace Okay, so this is the lowest dimension of Lagrangian. Okay. So and uh, and uh, you can expand uh, this out in terms of pi on. And uh, this is partial pi, partial first term. And uh, th th this is actually infinite, uh, has infinite number of terms. Okay, all of them have two derivatives, but uh, the, the, the later terms has more pi. Okay. So, so I have pi square trace. Commutator square. Okay. Ah, sorry. I, I I have adopted a notation that uh, that I don't want to always write this uh, out, right? So I I say pi is just uh, this. Stuff. Okay. Right. So 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 that's why they don't commute. Okay. The, the generator. Of course, if the if the you know the, there's only one ghost stone and so on, obviously this term doesn't exist. And uh, yeah. um, okay, so this is the theory of massless pions. Okay, not just pions, but uh, there are eight eight mesons, eight light mesons. At the at the at this level, they are all massless. Okay. Um, Okay, so now, but the chiral symmetry breaking, the chiral symmetry is not a, a exact symmetry. Okay, there are also other things that breaks chiral symmetry. Okay, in, in addition to the spontaneous symmetry breaking, there are explicit explicit symmetry. Explicit chiral symmetry. Breaking. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. Just a minute before you go to the breaking. So, can you clarify the uh, like uh, meaning of, of a pi? So, it's pi on the A constant. So, it's as you can write it there, it's a pi on the A constant, but it's a pi on the A vacuum. It's a, it's a related to this vacuum value. So, the actual. I'm, I'm actually. 
yeah, I, I may, yeah, I may get this wrong, but uh, this is roughly speaking like this. Okay. At that level, it's just a normalization. Then you can uh, build the full Carroll Lagrangian. You can you see that that one has the interpretation of pi on decay constant. Okay. But typically, just that number comes from what the value of the You you can understand that way too. Yes. No, sigma is not literally QQ bar. That's not necessarily QQ bar. Yeah, right. I expand yeah. it out. Sorry. So. Sorry. Sigma has all the pi's in it. We're, we're talking about two two different series. So so that is a that is the quark description, and uh, it's not very useful at the low energies. Okay, you should you should probably stop thinking about sigma as a QQ bar. Okay. It, it, uh, you can try to do a matching with the quark description and that it it, it all works out, I, I, you know. That, that, but that I, I don't want to do that. Okay. Yeah. So so at the, at the already at this at this level, you know, at, at at this level, you know, you can even just say that okay, this looks like, a, you know, I don't think you are making a huge mistake to just say this is a lambda QCD cube. Okay. And then uh, you know to uh, to do a more detailed matching between this series and that series, and uh, this is slightly more accurate, I think. Yeah. But that, it's somewhat confusing to me. So I, I was always confused by this point. Is that why is it so confusing to just scale phi? A phi looks like a normalization. At this level, I, I forget about that. I, I just tell you there is a theory. There is a there there's SU three cross SU three uh, <laughs> go down to SU three. I ask you to write the Lagrangian for the ghost stones. It's this one. I haven't even at this level. I haven't even identified what f pi is. Okay. And then you wanted to compare this, uh, right? Then, then I haven't even interpreted what f pi is yet. Okay. So. If you want, I don't. I don't have to call it F. I, let's call it F, and uh, later on you, you will see this. Is, yeah. So I'm not sure I, I will go there actually. But uh, but anyway, let's talk about explicit symmetry, symmetry breakings. The the, the the chiral symmetry is not a good symmetry. Okay, there are explicit symmetry breaking uh, parameters. Okay, in particular, it's broken by quark mass. These quarks are not massless. Okay, it's broken by by quark mass. So let me write it as a in the spirit of SU3. Let's let's all write it in the in the three by three matrix form. Okay, these are the three masses. Okay, that I have to include. None of them are equal. Okay, if they are equal, there is a there is a, there is a, there is a larger symmetry. But at this level, it's broken, completely broken Carroll symmetry. And uh, okay. And uh, but uh, as I as I ex as I as I said that I'm allowed to think about these are small parameters, okay? Basically because these things are smaller than the than the than the, than the scales I'm talking about, okay? So the the QCD is a GeV, and uh, the, well, the these are to a couple MeV. This is about 100 MeV. So if you really don't like, you know, we we can do a two flavor chiral perturbation theory. That's enough to describe the pions already. So, okay, and you w then we should think about this as a sporions that breaks the, the symmetry, right? So the, in the spirit of sporion analysis, I can imagine these sporions also transform under, under, under chiral symmetry. Okay, so just in order to write a Lagrangian, okay, in order to, 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 to write uh, the coupling between these sporions and the, and the pions in the in the, in the covariant way, okay. and uh, that is 
then I can start to write the, 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 the explicit breaking terms, which let me write it. You can you, you can verify that if, if I think both of them, th th this term is invariant under the transformation law of this and that. Okay. And uh, okay. Now now you will be even un unhappier. Now I have a new parameter mu. Okay. But this is all, all this this can all be fixed by compare with experiment. Okay. So just the fixed by. These are all phenomenological parameters at this moment. Okay. Now, if uh, if I expand this out in terms of pions, this is two mu trace m pi square. Okay. So it give you pion mass. Okay. Which is not surprising because I explicitly broken the symmetry. The ghost stones should not be massless anymore. Okay, so this give you this is this is to the second order of pi. Okay. Um, okay. In particular, okay. Now let let let's write some formulas. M pi zero square is mu m u plus m d m pi plus minus square. Is called. I haven't explained what the uh, m, why is a different charge yet, but uh, well, well, I'll do it soon. This is m pi zero square, degenerative m pi with m pi zero square at this level, okay. But uh, experimentally, or oh, you know, you can also calculate that there is a correction, okay, and this correction is calculable. And uh, there is m k zero square, which is mu times m d and m s. So this is the mass of k on, and uh, m k plus minus square is. Uh, um, mu over 3 and uh, mu plus md plus ms. Okay, so these are kind of predictions you can get just from uh, just from this simple uh, simple analysis. Sorry, this sorry. This. Ah, no, that's wrong. <laughs> that is completely wrong. This is mk0 square plus delta m square, okay? And uh, and uh, there is a eta square, which is a, uh, which is the formula I just put. Okay. okay. All right. So, now you say, so what? So you still have one free parameter, right? You still have a, you still have uh, three parameters here. So even if you, you know the quark mass, okay, you still have the three parameters. But ag again, the non-trivial thing is that I just fix one, then I know all of them. Yeah. yeah, so sorry. It's eta prime is u1, u1 eta. That, that, that's the thing that I, we haven't talked about. Yeah. Am I missing someone? Yeah, so there are, there, 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 yeah, right. So there's a K long and a K short. Yeah. And, uh, um, <coughs> sorry. Um, so now you, you, you can predict all of them. Uh, take, turn, turn this thing around. You can also say that uh, I measured all these mass, right? It's supposed to, so, so these are the things certainly that have been observed first. Right. So I can turn this around. I can solve for these masses, okay? And you can calculate the ratios of these quark masses, at least. 
So the, ignore delta m square for the moment. Okay. So you can you can calculate this, and uh, and uh, they actually agree with the experiment to a few percent. Okay. So this this works pretty well, despite uh, of uh, some initial doubt about uh, whether this works or not. Okay. And uh, now let's come to this delta m square. Okay. Delta m square obviously is the difference between the charge and the neutral ones. This coming from the fact that the <coughs> QCD is not the only interaction in town at this energy scale. Okay, there's also QED. Okay, these quarks carry different charges. Okay, so the, the QED coupling itself breaks chiral symmetry as well. The gauging of QED already breaks chiral symmetry, just that the quark doesn't have the same charge. Okay, so imagine that I again in the same same, same spirit of three by three matrix. So so I I can write this. Okay. So so this also breaks the the SU three rotations, and you can also calculate just use the spray analysis the the splitting that this caused on the uh, of this, so but you can already you know you can you can more or less guess well there, there in module of some details the you can more or less guess what this is okay let's just guess okay and so it's just some QED coupling right so it's proportional to E square so it's not directly it's not a directly contributes to the mass okay it's just uh, after all, I'm just this this just appears in the gauge interactions of the of the. It's it's not a, it's directly a mass term, but it's a. It's just a sorry pi plus minus. It's a, it's this kind of couple corrections. Yeah. Pi, pi. It's this kind of corrections. Therefore, I include a loop factor here. Okay. It's quadratically divergent. Okay, this this contribution is quadratically divergent, but this is a theory with a finite cutoff. The cutoff is lambda QCD. Okay, the theory is valid up to lambda QCD. Uh, uh, above that is a different theory. Okay. So, right. roughly speaking, okay, and uh, this is roughly correct. Okay. So in detail, this is a cutoff. This is a cutoff, not exact lambda QCD. It's by another resonance called rho, and uh, and that's ex then then the, if you want, you can you can improve that calculation. But it works. Okay. So okay. So all of these, I think, has uh, has analogies in the, in the later in in particular, for example, in composite Higgs models, where we talk about. Okay, so it's almost identical ideas. Uh, right. Okay. So these are the mass spectrums. You can also so so the but the, this, this is more than chiral chiral perturbation theory can do more than that. Okay. You can also calculate the pion scatterings with with for example with with chiral perturbation theory. Okay. So let's just uh, let's just do it quickly. So suppose I wanted to calculate uh, pi pi scatterings, which we do, we do do, we actually do it in the, in the lab. We can do it, uh, uh, okay. And uh, at a, at a energy around the m pi, okay, not much, not not much higher m pi. And uh, you, you I, I can use this theory. And you see that already this term give you a contribution. There are four pi's in it. Okay, <coughs> give you a contribution. So that the amplitude of uh, of this is uh, f pi square, right? And uh, derivative square. Okay, but in Fourier space, it's just uh, it's just energy square. Okay, so you know, I imagine that I have a center of N and then E and so on. Okay, and uh, 
and that's it. Okay, so of course you can refine this the, the, this calculation. Okay, there there is a, a there are additional terms you can add to this Lagrangian. There are there are p to the there are there are e to the fourth to f pi e to e over f pi to the fourth corrections too, if you want to to make a more detailed prediction of uh, of this coupling. But the, the behavior, the leading order behavior is this. Now, already you see that uh, this theory, e suppose I don't know about the quark theory, okay, I just somehow guessed because I see a number of light pions, I guessed uh, this, uh, this low energy, I guessed, uh, the, the, you know, I guess this is the symmetry breaking pattern and uh, these are the goldstones and so on, I, I do experiment, I, I'm pretty happy that I can actually predict certain result based on that Lagrangian. But already at this level, you know this cannot be the whole story, okay? Because this amplitude will become strong when energy is higher, okay? So you can maybe you can you can think about this as a, using this as a as a definition of four four pi on coupling. So four pi on will become four, pi on will become strongly coupled when the when the energy is bigger than phi, okay? So. Now, wh when do you call strong coupling? That's a matter of taste, but uh, let me call it a strongly coupled if this becomes 6 4 pi square. That's just my choice. You can make your choice too. So, uh, uh, this, this, the simple motivation is that if you view this as a coupling, then if coupling is this strong, all the loops are equally important. Okay? All the loops are equal, at least. Well, and uh, um, so that you see that uh, this, you see that you, you, you then, then you will say that uh, if 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 this equal to this, this series should break down. Okay, I, I should hit a cutoff. This series should transit into some other different series. Okay, because this series becomes very strongly coupled. Okay, so it should become something else, and this gives you the cutoff of the series should be four pi times f, roughly speaking, okay? So even, so, so this, again, this is something else we can emphasize is that uh, from an effective field theory point of view, the effective field theory tell you where the theory breaks down and there is a cutoff and uh, this is this case too. And of course, in this case, we know this, we know what the, the this is lambda QCD exactly and uh, and this formula actually works pretty well and <laughs> in this case and, uh, and uh, the new theory is a, uh, is, uh, is a series of gluon and the quarks. Is this okay? This is a very good. Okay, so let's come to our next topic, which is uh, electroweak symmetry break. So just just put this uh, in the back of your mind for the moment. Uh, where should I do this? Okay, I need to. Do I need to wash the board already? Let's wash the board. Yeah.
Okay, so maybe let me make a few remarks first and just wait for the board to dry. So, um, I think historically, well, as far as I can tell, it would, uh, symmetry, the, the fact that the, the gauge boson somehow have mass has been a quite confusing subject. Okay, so the, the, the earlier law is that the gauge symmetry prevent gauge boson to have a mass. Okay, and uh, you know, then I think the first uh, non abelian gauge theory, at least the attempt, was was trying to come up with some some theory that can describe a weak interaction and so on. But immediately was a, was a thought that was not really viable because uh, they predict the massless gauge bosons and so on. Okay, and uh, and uh, yeah. So, but of course now this is all very understood in terms of Higgs mechanism. So, let me. I think you have all seen Higgs mechanism before, but let, let me do it in a way probably, you know, again slightly different, slightly different uh, perspective. Which one is dry enough? I can write down. <laughs> Maybe I will just start from uh, way back. Ah, good. I'll just start here. So, okay. The first thing you you want to you you know the the first attempt to, to to say there is a there's a massive gauge boson is just to say I will add a mass term. Okay. And uh, I think that. This was dismissed, uh, you know. People, oh, this is not, this is not gauge invariant. Okay, this is uh, this is bad. This is basically the the idea, the the, the foundations of saying that gauge symmetry forbids a mass term. Right? But, but of course, that's not completely correct, and uh, you, it's actually fine. You, you you can actually do this. Okay. To to see this, you know, I, I think you you know you can actually do this already. You know. In, even if after you've done all the Higgs uh, and so on and so forth, you can always go to unitary gauge. Unitary gauge, it looks like this. Okay. <laughs> and so it must be fine. It's just a gauge choice. Okay. But it's, it's the the physics uh, is is more transparent if I I, write, I, I consider a slightly different uh, slightly different gauge. Okay. So I will I will instead of this I will write this term as a with some uh, suggestive notations, okay? I'll write it like this. Okay? And uh, these two are completely equivalent. Okay? If you want, they just differ by a by a gauge transformation. Okay. They're completely equivalent with each other. The, the, the physics are identical. Okay, but already from this term, you see that uh, this is a fully gauge invariant. Okay, so the gauge, the gauge invariant is guaranteed. Okay. By the way, I'm not uh, going to carry around all these uh, non-abelian indices, but some non-abelian is, is is understood. Um, it's same same story for the U one. Okay. Okay. Now instead of a transform, but also pi shift. Okay. This is a this this series is gauge invariant under the, the following transformation. The only novelty here is the pi transform nonlinearly. So gauge symmetry is realized on pi in a nonlinear way. Okay. Nothing wrong with this. Okay. So, so gauge symmetry does not gauge the so-called gauge symmetry does not prevent you from writing down a mass term. Okay. But what does this do? Is make manifest that the mass that the inclusion of mass term means that you don't just have this. Okay. You are propagating a 
one more degree of freedom. Okay, so you are propagating in one more degree of freedom, which is uh, this term is just uh, the kinetic term for that extra degree of freedom. Okay, that's okay. And of course, this is again totally expected because we know mass massive gauge boson has three polarizations. So, in addition to the two transverse mode, you have to have something more. Okay. Of course, you all know that, that this is the Eaton Goldstone and and so on. Okay. Okay. So, if I just take a weak interaction, take a weak interaction. And do this. Okay, that's fine. Right. And uh, and uh, this is the Higgs mechanism. Okay, if you want to call it. this is the Higgs mechanism. Right. And uh, and uh, this actually this is actually what this is, is what we do well, mostly what we do before 2012. That that's we all that's that's all we need to do explains all the experimental data before 2012, just with this. Okay. However, we know this theory is incomplete, cannot be extrapolated to arbitrary high scales. Okay. So, you know, to do that, let's just uh, write a few more steps. Okay, so this is a a goldstone. We already we just went over how to how to do goldstone properly, right? So let's just let me just repeat more or less repeat what 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 I just said, which is uh, I I can package the goldstone into a nonlinear sigma model field. Okay. The normalization constant is V, okay. and uh, and the, the 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 Lagrangian of that is just the V square trace d sigma square, okay, and uh, okay, that's it. That, that 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 that's what I have. Okay, so if uh, if uh, so, so because I'm propagating that ghost stone, there has to be a piece of Lagrangian look like this. Okay. So it turns out that, that I can also, just very similar to, to do pi pi scatterings in the in QCD, I can also do ghost stone scatterings in the standard model. Okay. The way to do this is to do WW scattering. Let me not I mean, draw a blob instead of draw all the diagrams. Okay, but let's just do Draw all the w, w, do the w scattering. In particular, uh, I'm going to do this scattering at a very high energy. Okay. Again, this is where we know, at least in our pion theory, this, we know that we see the theory should break down at high energy. So I, I also wanted to do this at high energy when when E is much greater than the mass of the W boson. Just like there, I'm doing the energy is greater than the mass of the pion, and uh, you know the polarization polarization vector for the for the W, the, the longitudinal polarization. The longitudinal polarization vector is proportional to p mu over m. Okay, so so at very high energies, it's longitudinal dominated. Okay, so so at very high energy, I can. Imagine this is all just longitudinal scatterings, and uh, the longitudinal longitudinal part is exactly the ghost stone. Okay, so if I do again, th then I do WW scattering at very high energies. I'm essentially doing pion ghost stone scattering. Okay. The formal statement of what I just said is called the ghost stone equivalent theorem. Okay, you, the statement is you can take any Ws and uh, get very high energy. You can replace that with the ghost stone. You get the same result. Um, okay. But okay. So since it's just pion scatterings, then we can just derive the result from this Lagrangian. 
instead of going through the standard model gauge interaction and so on. Okay? So, so this is proportional to the amplitude of this is proportional to the E square over V square. Very, again, almost identical to the story I just erased. Okay. So, and we know that uh, this theory cannot be the theory, the final theory. At higher energy, it will break down. The energy it will break down or cut off is uh, is again four pi times v. Okay. And uh, ah, by the way, I you know in the, in a fully in general, I should write this as a covariant derivative and so on. Okay. From this, you can also see that. Uh, uh, the MWs and Zs are on the order of G V square. Okay. So this also gives you MW Z. Just you can also make a prediction for that. And this is about the two hundred GeV. Okay. For for our purpose, let's just call it one hundred GeV. And we know that the one TeV. So even though the theory I just add a mass term can explain everything what I do, I know that once uh, around the TeV, the theory will break down. Okay? In other words, something needs to happen either at a TeV or before TeV. Before TeV is okay too. Okay? It just never hit the strong coupling point. Something happened before that. That's fine too. Okay? So sometimes this is called a no loose theorem. Okay? Because uh, sometimes if you want to build a, spend a lot of money build a collider, you want to make sure you can discover something. Sometimes, not always the good motivation, but if, you, if that is your motivation, there's a no-lose theorem, okay, before, before 2012, okay, in the, in the, in the late 90s and the, in the 90s, and, the, and the, you, you, ha you do have that no-lose theorem. Something needs to happen before that, okay? And uh, of course, we already also we don't need a new collider to go there. You know, LHC is capable of probing a TeV scale. So, <coughs> so yeah, there are many ways. So, so by oh. We don't know. We could. Yeah, I, that's, that's yeah, literally what I, I, what I just about to say. There are many, many, many ways that this can be rescued. This problem can be solved. Okay. So the, by the way, this business of solving this problem, I don't know. It's, it's not a very good name. It's called a unitarization of uh, WW scattering amplitude. Okay. This is just. Okay, you know, the idea is that when you go to high energy amplitude, it becomes very large value to unitarity. So something has to happen before it to unitarize the amplitude. Okay. And uh, there are many ways to unitarize the amplitude. Okay. So you, you, so you, why that you to I'm about to say it. Yeah. yeah. No, but, no, but, 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 but it's important to have this perspective. Higgs is just one of the ways. Okay. So, in fact, this is what we're going to talk about, since that that is already been discovered. The simplest new physics, the simplest way to to unitarize the amplitude is to add a singlet scalar. Okay. To add a singular scalar, not 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 arbitrarily, but in, in add a singular scalar to this combination. So this is a e to the i pi over v. In but but extend this into add it to in a, in a very particular way. Okay. Just add it in a very particular way. Okay. Notice that I'm calling this a singlet, and that this is a singlet. Okay. This does not transform under SU two rotation. Okay. 
Okay, obviously you know this is the Higgs boson. Okay, this is the Higgs boson we discovered. Okay, this but this this is a singlet. First thing I would say this is a singlet. Okay, and uh, and uh, it does not transform into SU two. Second thing I would say it has nothing to do with mass generation. Okay, so it's not the particle that generates the mass for you. Okay. W bosons don't propagate in the vacuum scatter with Higgs bosons to get mass. Okay, it's because the vacuum has a has a has spontaneous temperature breaking here. Okay. So this is just a way to unitarize that amplitude. That's the, that's the definition of Higgs boson if you want. Okay? So of course now with this, in addition to the in addition to the original diagram, we know it's divergent. And the, whoops, you have uh, additional diagrams you can draw involving Higgs bosons. Okay. You can draw this, for example, and you can draw a few more. Okay. And you see that once you add this all up, and uh, this, the, the, the energy diverging behavior cancels. Okay. Of course, you know it's ahead of time also. This will have to happen. Okay. The, the reason that this will happen, that you know this will have to cancel, is that uh, this is just one way to write that field. The way that the e to the minus, e to the i pi, and uh, times that, that's just one way of writing that Higgs field, okay? A field theory, I can do arbitrary field redefinitions. One useful field re redefinition is to recognize that I can package that four degree of freedom. There are four degree of freedom there, okay? So three gold stones and one. I can package that into Into this, it's just it's just it's just a field redefinition away, okay. And this is a doublet, complex doublet, okay. Under uh, and with doublet, I can write gauge interactions like this, okay. And in this theory, obviously, there's nothing, okay. There's a there's no energy growing behavior. There's no one over mass scale in this theory. Okay, so you, therefore you know that theory cannot have a, the physics shouldn't change uh, depending on which which ba which field definition you 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 you, you use. Okay, so that has to be fine. Okay, and uh, what is the Higgs mass? One. 25 GeV, okay. And notice that uh, this happens much earlier than it's needed. The utilization of amplitude happens much earlier than it's needed. Okay, that's fine, okay. Nothing wrong with that, and so on. Again, let me emphasize again. So, so before 2012, we don't know whether this is the picture or not. This is the simplest picture. There are additional, there are other pictures. There are many other ways I can imagine, but they're all more complicated. By, by, by some measure, okay, by the measure there are more, more fields I have to talk about and they involve strong interaction, they involve other things, okay. Right, I Im imagine I don't, I, yeah, there's no guarantee whatever you unitarized amplitude will be a weakly coupled theory with, uh, with a single resonance, right? There can be a QCD-like theory, for example, okay? Yeah. So besides mass, what properties of yeah, I, 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 let, 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 let's talk about that later. Yeah, it's a scalar; it's not spin two, and uh, it decays to dipole towns, so it, it cannot be fermion. It can only be scalar or spin two, and uh, it's not a spin two because they measure it. Of course, no, none of us believe it's a spin two. But it's a in the in the it's more or less CP even, even though in this one, this one is obviously CP even. So more or less spin CP even, and, uh, and then there are all, all kinds of other measurements that you can do. And we, 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 we probably have a chance to, to talk about it at some point. Okay. 
Okay. So that, that, let's uh, let's go on. Okay. Now we have uh, we have our and uh, this is basically our electric weak signature breaking. Uh, the the so-called standard model way of doing electric weak signature breaking. Now let's again consider additional symmetries in this Lagrangian. Okay, which also have interesting uh, implications. In particular, let's talk about uh, the custodial symmetry. Custodial SU2, sometimes called a C. The C is not color, it's called the custodial symmetry. Okay, let me just let me explain what that is. To do that, it's useful to think yet another representation of a, another way of writing down the Higgs field. Okay, slightly more more cumbersome, but it's useful to to think about that representation. Is to write the Higgs field as uh, the following. This is a, this is basically the anti-symmetric tensor. This is a, the yeah. in SU two wise. For SU two wise, this is a doublet. This is also a doublet. Okay, because SU two is pseudo real, and uh, they have a different hypercharge, but they have a different U one charge. But that's not what we are going to focus on. Okay, so so I will write it like this. Okay, and uh, and uh, I can write this as a, in terms of component, this looks like uh, the zero neutral component of the Higgs field on the diagonal looks like this. Okay? This is a little redundant, but as you see, writing this way, it will make certain symmetry m more e m easier to visualize. Okay? All right. Now, in this way, I will start with my Lagrangian, okay? You can verify, I can actually, I can actually write that Lagrangian in terms of d mu phi dagger d mu phi, okay? Trace where d mu phi is okay I already group the poly matrices and uh, and uh, and the w into a, into a three three dimensional vector phi So I have two gauge couplings. Okay, and this is SU two. This is a, this is a U one hypercharge. Okay, I can write it like that. Uh, you should you should check it. Okay, so I think uh, take you one minute in Mathematica to check it. But, and uh, notice that, that there is the curious fact that this is a sigma three here. This is just coming from the fact that the, but that that the, um, yeah, the, the hypercharge for Higgs and Higgs dagger is different. Okay, that's just the, this is embodying that, that fact, and uh, this is the usual SU two interaction. Okay. All right. So let's think about symmetries. Okay, let's think about symmetries, and. Uh, First, obviously, the whole thing is the SU to L invariant. Okay, the SU to L is uh, acting on, act on this as uh, this on the left. Okay, so this is a two by two matrix. So it's important whether it's on the left or on the right. So this is on the left. And uh, in this case, you can verify this is. Uh, under this transforming this covariant derivative goes to U L uh, 
Okay? So, where's the... Well, it's understood that I have to do a corresponding rotation on the W's as well. Okay? This is goes to UL. Okay? So this is just a global version of the SU2 gauge invariance, if you want, and, uh, and uh, the in under which W transform like a triplet. This is basically saying W transform like a triplet. Okay, it's SO3 rotation on W. W is the fundamental of that SO3. Okay, so that's, that's certainly a symmetry. Now, on the other hand, okay, let me for the moment consider a limit where G prime goes to zero. I'm going to turn off hypercharge coupling for the moment. Okay? If you want a motivation, it's a smaller than, than SU2 gauge coupling. Okay. So I wanted to I would like to identify the symmetries with the large terms in Lagrangian and then treat the small terms as spurions. Okay. So th this is what I'm doing. And uh, with this goes to zero, I'm just ignoring the la the, the, the last term. And uh, there is also a SU2R symmetry, okay, on this, which act on this on the right, okay, SU2, SU2R rotation. Okay. That basically, this is the reason I wanted to write Higgs field in this, uh, in this silly form, okay. because I can talk about this more, more easily. Okay, and in the limit, in this limit, d mu phi goes to d mu phi u r tech. Okay, because uh, there's nothing, right? You're just acting on this on phi. Notice with this term is not, because if you act it from this side, then you have to go through sigma three first. Sigma three is not invariant. Okay. Yeah, that's precisely the reason that this is a spurious term, okay? So, okay. All right. Now, of course, uh, electric, electric weak symmetry is, break, break, is broken. So, electric weak symmetry breaking, what does it mean? It means that the phi has a VEV. Okay, like this. And uh, turn, turning on this valve means that these two are not separate rotations. They are not separate symmetries anymore. But the diagonal subgroup of these two are still the symmetry. Okay. So this takes SU two L times SU two R to its diagonal. which is SU to C. So this is a diagonal. It's called a, a custodial SU2. Okay. SU2 custodial. And uh, an under custodial SU2, W is still a triplet under custodial SU2. Okay, because W is a triplet under SU2L. Okay, anytime I rotate, I have to go through W. Okay. All right. So, all right. Okay. Now, already at this level, you can draw some conclusions from from the symmetry breaking here, because because there is a symmetry under which W is a triplet. Okay you conclude that their mass are the same. Okay? The three W bosons have the same mass. Okay. 
Of course, this is broken by the fact there is a finite G prime. Okay? So this is only broken at this level, meaning at the tree level, by G prime. Okay? But by turning on a finite G prime. Okay? And which is, is true. <laughs> I mean, you can obviously verify this by by just uh, just start with uh, with this Lagrangian and work it out, okay? But it's as I said, it's always useful to to identify what's the symmetry behind it, so that uh, in order to write a new, write a new things, you don't you don't destroy these relations, okay? And that's what's important. So. I don't know whether you have seen the mass matrix of uh, of, uh, of W's or not, but let, let me let me just write it in the, the mass matrix of W's. Uh, there are four gauge bosons. Their mass matrix is G square G square. So I have a V square here, G square. Maybe a half. Maybe I'm missing a half. Okay. So, and that's it without a G prime. Okay. They, they, the, this three has the same mass. Without a G prime, obviously this doesn't couple. Okay. So, then there is a G G prime, G G prime. Okay. So custodial symmetry basically dictates the form of this matrix. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So let me just write the, the the actual formula of W and Z's. Okay. And uh, sometimes it's a People define a parameter called the row, just uh, just to you know capture the fact that uh, at the at the standard model at this level is one. Okay, this parameter is one. Sorry, this this cosine theta angle is just a rotation about this uh, submatrix here. So cosine theta w square is uh, this is called a weak mixing angle. Sometimes called a Weinberg angle. Okay. So it's not clear what the W stands for. It's, uh, uh, anyway, so but this is the tree level relation, okay? And uh, let's see. And this means that uh, since standard model is weakly coupled, experimentally, you should observe this parameter, this ratio to be one, with small corrections. Okay, so let's just, uh, let me also mention Already in the standard model, there are some small corrections to this at one loop level. First, I haven't talked about the Yukawa couplings yet. Okay, I haven't talked about quark mass yet. Okay, so let's 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 talk about the Yukawa couplings. Okay, it turns out the Yukawa coupling can also be written with this, with this guy. Okay, instead of H. You're probably more used to seeing it with the doublet, but I can also write your cover couplings with this view. And it looks like this. I'm writing the top U cover couplings because they are the largest. Okay. So top and bottom U cover couplings because B L and this is the value of phi. So I'm, let me just put V here. 
okay, and uh, TR BR. Nah. No. Okay. If if that's all there is, top and bottom card will have the same mass. Okay. That's what what the Yukawa coupling do. Okay. So you have a main, you have to insert something like this here. Okay. But this means that SU2 uh, rotation is not a symmetry of this term. Okay. So since y top is not the same as y bottom, SU2 C not a symmetry. Okay. And so there, in, in the standard model, there's already, in addition to the hypercharge, G prime, there's additional sporions to break custodial SU2. Okay. It looks like this. You say, oh, top view power coupling is pretty big, but it's small, still a small correction because this is not directly a, a gauge boson mass. It enters gauge boson mass at, at one loop. Okay, so let's just draw those diagrams. Uh, ah, good. Okay. So there are diagrams you can draw. Obviously, this has to involve top and bottoms. For W mass, there is a top, bottom. For Z, top bar. For example, there are diagrams like this. Okay. This, these diagrams give you corrections to the relation of WZ mass that I just write from the tree level. Because, basically because the, the top quark mass breaks uh, custodial symmetry. Okay. So, in terms of the row parameter, this gives you a correction to the row parameter. Okay. Since these are the top quark mass, Top quark Yukawa coupling connected, re related. You know it has to proportional to top Yukawa coupling. Okay, since it's correction to mass, so it's V square, so it's Y T M top square. Okay. This is proportional to M top square. So I'm going to just give you a very rough formula. I have a better formula on the notes. Okay, so it's something like this. Okay, and. Uh, then since this number is dimensionless, okay, the way I define it is just the ratio of two masses, so it's dimensionless. So something else has to make up uh, the dimension. So it's okay. It's roughly something like this. Okay. And in the standard model, this is about one percent. The the actual calculation is this is about one percent. And the data has been very well tested too. Uh, and uh, so far, but you know, th so this is actually depend on the top mass. Okay, W. This is another way of saying is the W Z mass ratio depends on top mass. Um, I have only talked about uh, the tree level effect of hypercharge, right? So the, the just in the mass mixing that it, it breaks the uh, custodial SU two, but hypercharge can also give you one loop contributions. Okay, to the WZ mass. Okay, let me just. So that is that goes like uh, the Higgs. This is the leading contribution. Okay, Higgs. Okay, this is the. Hypercharge. If you, you can, you can understand. You can, you can. If you want, you can imagine this is the hypercharge gauge boson. Okay. And this gives you also a delta rho. Again, it's g prime square because it's hypercharge. And uh, right. 
sum factor log well, loop factor first of all and uh, some other numerical factor then mh square mw square okay so this contribution is also important in the standard model but it depends on the log of mh square okay the difference here and there is the mass of Higgs itself is not a sporium okay that's why it's in the log okay it's just the scale that, that you have to you have to you know there is a mass is a little heavier than the, the, the W boson the Z mass okay so there's a there's a log okay so all right all right so of course both of these effects has been very well tested so in my note I in included the figure and uh, you know it's these, these kind of figures usually goes like uh, you can do MW yeah, in the f in the plane of because MW is the, in the firstly measured and the, and the M top. Oh, first of all, it's just based on the measurement of MW and M MZ. You can already try to make a guess of M top. Okay, just based on the formula that give you some range already. Okay, and uh, so in this in this range, I think. Okay. It's usually something like this. So this is the experimental error bar on MW, and this is the experimental error bar on M top. And you can try to, from if you fix these two, then the ratio in principle depends on M Higgs. Okay, that the ratio in principle depends on M Higgs logarithmically. Okay, not very sensitive, but logarithmically. So you can have contours like M Higgs. Okay, different M Higgs. Uh, Ah, okay. I, I'll, the, the, this is the last thing I'm going to say. I, I need uh, one more minute, then, then, then I'll, yeah. So this is the reason that uh, even before the discovery of Higgs, you can hear things that uh, we sort of guessed what the Higgs mass is. Not very well because it's logarithmic dependence. But even before discovery of Higgs, the precision measurement of WZ mass pinned the Higgs mass below 200 GeV, roughly speaking. So. One more minute, okay, just one more minute. <laughs> because this is really just uh, the same topic, okay? There's also additional contributions that uh, for new from, uh, from uh, operators you can write down that breaks the custodial SU2, okay? You can write it in different ways. You can write it, for example, in, in, the, in, the, in, in terms of the sigma field. This will be... Because yeah, it's re at this level it doesn't really have to do with with the Higgs boson, so you can just write it with this. And imagine you plug in the valve for sigma field later, and it's custodial breaking because the sigma three here. Okay, or you can, if you want, you can write it in the in the in terms of the Higgs doublet, and that looks like this. Okay, and. Uh, and the, the test that we have run more or less says that uh, M needs to be greater than 3 TeV. Okay, so anything you write that violates the custodial, when you integrate those things out, you will generate these operators, and uh, this, this is the, and uh, those things has to be heavier than 3 TeV. Okay, so I think this is, this is actually finished what I wanted to say about the standard model. Okay, next time we'll go on to, to be on standard model. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the different scale. The yeah, yeah, very different axis. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Yeah, it's a per mule level. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I should say that the MZ, both MZ and W, and uh, are, are down to per mule level. Okay. From from E plus C e minus uh, lab measurements and so on, and 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 a temperature measurement. And the, yeah, MT as Len said, the error is about the GeV.
yeah, so it's basically coming from something like this. Because the dependence on mt is much stronger than the dependence on m hex. Because that's a logarithmic dependence, and this is quadratic. Right. Top part uh, with three TeV. Then, okay, you can you can try to balance these two too. Okay, <laughs> let's not play that game. Okay, so it, uh, then then you have to go way out on the on m hex and try to balance these two. Yeah. So what happens if I add four thousand? Yeah, triple it triplet vev in general breaks custodial SQ2. That that uh, that that's why if you add any triplet, it's the the size of its vev has to be very small. I don't remember like an MEV or something, right? That has to be very small. And uh and the doublet you, you can always you know this this applies to any doublet you want. Yes, I should also <laughs> say that. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so, so usually these days. <laughs> what the hell am I doing? <laughs>